Welcome to another how-to. As you see, we're back at work. We're still under semi-lockdown. All the equipment needs to be sanitized with defoggers, hands washed, face masks. Um, I'm all alone here, so nobody near me. I can talk without my mask on. And uh, today we're going to show testing of knots instead of a wishbone bead that's on the wishbone bridle, some people call it. A lot of questions have been asked, is it possible? We have never tested this, so today's the day we're going to be testing this. I'll show you what we're doing and uh, how we're going to do it, and later on I'll show the actual knot I've been using. So, what we have here, Dynema McCord, inside beyond the knot in the rubber is another knot on the Dynema McCord. We've marked it, so I know this side is the knot. On the opposite end, being very short, is a bead tied in as you would normally tie a wishbone knot. So what we're going to do is stretch the rubber with the load cell. The kilogram shown will be visual on our screen here. And I'm going to slowly increase the pressure. A single 16 mil band maximum is normally 60 kilos. We're only recording what's going on on one side. So we need to have 30 kilos maximum. And we'll try and take it beyond that and see what gives. We're testing the knot against the bead. Okay, so now we're going to load it. Excuse the echo, I'm wearing a face shield and my glasses just in case something fractures here. As you can see, starting to load. 15, 16, 17. The rubber stretching quite a lot. There we're getting to 30. So that's the max load you would normally set up. We're going to start going beyond that. You can see the bead actually showing through the rubber. Fifty percent now above what would normally be maximum. We're now up at well, 50 kilos plus 50. 556 getting very tight that's the maximum the ran can push so clearly there that knot's working perfectly well I know a few guys have used this knot wishbone system instead of beads before and uh, this is something we needed to test for a long time on a recent trip to Australia, I saw the guys at Adreno using a butter knot with great success. Great knot, looks good, but I found it a little difficult to make. I had to keep referring to a video of it, and uh, I needed to try and find something a little more simple. Um, the knot inside is not something you're going to see, and uh, this one seems to work just fine. To tie the knot, we use our standard Dyneema spear line. It's the same Dyneema we use on all our wishbones. We use a knot similar to what we would use when tying the Dyneema onto the gun. Simply throw two loops, take the tag end, bring it back through, but this time we do it four times. Two, three, four. When this is pulled down, it creates quite a ball. That ball is basically what you require to create the biggest diameter to enable the rubber to grip. Now I'm going to retie that, show it again. Basically, mark more or less where you would need it to be. Throw two loops. One, two, take the tag end, pass it through four times. Once, twice, three times, four times. Use the pliers, or in this case, long nose, haul on the knot.
there you have it. Ugly as sin, but great not. And as you've seen in the previous video, works very well. I have now cut the tag ends and I'm going to lubricate them to get them into the rubber. I've soaked a small piece of rag with silicone. You can use a small sponge. You can also use a dishwashing liquid, but try not to use any petroleum products, something like a, a grease, Vaseline or Q20 spray. Any of those can damage the latex. So, small bit of lubricant on the end. You do not need to get too much on the rubber. If you do, it will be difficult to grab. I'm now going to hold the bead with the long nose. Try and dampen it well. And then see if I can push it through. There we go. Easy as that. If it's not in far enough, use the point. Be careful not to hurt yourself. Push it in deeper. Now all we have to do is tie that up. And that's what we've got there. That's exactly the same thing we did there. And we hold on that. And as you see, worked well. On a side note, we as a company, we're extremely fortunate we have a retail store within our factory. This enables us to talk one-on-one -on -one with the customers. We test all new products locally and we very quickly pick up if this works or not, long before we send them worldwide. We're also fortunate many of our staff working here at Rob Allen also dive and they obviously help with testing. All great for product development like this one. Since making this single strand knotted wishbone, I think I must really look into the double strand system as well. I'll do this in another video. Regarding these double wishbones, we've had problems in the past when we tie the knots onto a bead. The knot seems to always slip, causing both lines to become equilength. This is quite a problem and I'll show you this now in a, on a spear, what happens. When using a double lined wishbone, the problem is that one of the strands will engage, the other tries to engage, and that very easily gets damaged on this sharp edge. The slot itself is about two millimeter. The line is about 1.8, 1.9, and the lower one that does engage will flatten to some degree and allow the next one to try. That sharp edge can damage it. What then occurs the next time you try and load, the damaged one may enter the slot and the non-damaged one will then get damaged. We've noticed that customers using double lined wishbones tend to wear out the double line before the rubber actually wears out. Whereas those using a single line often come into the shop and the wishbone line is still in good condition, even though the band itself has since worn out. For obvious reasons, if you have a thin spear, a double wishbone will not be damaged. Regarding damage on a single, most of the damage we see occurs from being dragged whilst rubbing against the spear. Once it goes over and jumps in, that pressure can damage that line. Also, if there's any corrosion on a shaft, dragging it down the shaft will also damage it. As shown in a previous video where I showed how to load guns, best to turn your knuckles, holding that off, get it past, then engage. So, in conclusion, as you can see, a knot does work. I'm actually quite impressed. I would recommend actually using it in the thinner bands. Those that are using 12 mil and 14 mil, it will put a lot less stress in the zone where a bead normally goes. And uh, yeah, something you can easily do in the field. I hope you enjoyed this video. Any other questions or tests you want us to do, just drop a comment in the 
zone below and we'll try and do what we can.